Everyone always helps. Okay, we'll call the meeting back to order at uh, one thirteen. Pres a quorum of the board is present, so the meeting is called to order. First item is participation of the public. Marilyn, is there anyone that wishes to address us today? Yes, I have one public participation form from Sherry Wells. If there are other people that have a public participation form, please let me know. And you can monitor the time here. And I think you know full well that the board doesn't engage in conversation because I know you've been here before, but they're happy to hear whatever you have. And I read instructions. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So we're ready when you are. So. <clears throat> I'm Sherry A. Wells, and I have spent a lot of time, as Sheena said, visiting and paying attention to what the Michigan Board of Education is doing. I've run for the State Board for the Green Party of Michigan. Uh, as far as education goes, I am probably our official spokesperson. I was chair of the Michigan Green Party from March last year until February this year, and they've turned me loose for outreach, so watch out. And for our state board again, I hope, when we have our convention. I gave Ms. Schneider a copy of a letter that I had written to the House Committee on Elections and Ethics. As you know, it wasn't just the university boards that were in question, but also the State Board of Education, which goes under the radar for everybody, as important as you are. And so I did, in that letter, uh, the history of the State Board and how it has been repeatedly, the education in our state has been kept separate by both our constitutions and, um, and the local part of it, too. I uh, read all the Little House on the Prairie books to my daughter, and in that, the local uh, people put a section of some farmer's farm, built themselves a school, paid for the teachers themselves. They knew what they wanted. And right now we still have the importance, as you know, the locals, because we have, some cities have an incinerator that children have to deal with, with the asthma that Dr. Pugh has mentioned before, and poisoned water, we know where that's at, and rural busing. So there's all kinds of local issues, but at the same time, uh, having things like the ISDs. 40 years ago, my son's teacher took a class at the ISD on how to teach gifted and found stuff that could be used for her whole classroom, which was absolutely wonderful. She was the teacher that he came back as an adult to say thank you. So we, we all have at least one of those. Um, and one of the things I asked one of our other Green Party members who's a retired Detroit public school teacher. I said, could you tell the second graders who are having trouble with reading? And she said, yes. Without a test? Yes. I said, so which kids were doing well with reading? And she said, there were books in the home, the parents read to the kids, and they had their own library card. Half the libraries in Detroit have been closed. Some of the open ones are sharing a librarian because they're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then her other library is open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, in Flint, there is one library. The city of Lansing has about 20% or less more population than Flint, and it has three libraries. So we're, it, libraries can be certainly a partner, a public library partners to the ISD's work that we were presented with this morning. Uh, and is, it would be a very necessary partner. So I would certainly encourage them to work together. The Flint Library does have a Dolly Parton program, which allows kids to have books, take, take home and keep some books. So there are some other programs with the libraries. One dispute I've had since I first heard about is this top 10 and 10. This is not a football league. I like the idea that, that was presented about those 10 essentials. If that's something that Michigan can show is success, then every state in the union, every child in the country can go after excellence. Not top 10, not first, but excellence all across the board. And I look forward to that. I visit Georgia often, and they're having the same problem with their schools. And some of us know exactly where that's coming from. But if we can get around those people and do the best for our children, you've got my support. From this table, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Approval of the State Board of Education minutes. Is there a motion? Moved <coughs> and supported. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> motion carries. Report of the co-presidents, please. 
first. Um, go for it. it is, I'm sorry, is this where we... Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, we had just um, individually and then uh, uh, together uh, did our year review of uh, the superintendent's performance, and we agree uh, and are very thankful for your service uh, and outstanding um, job with the Michigan Department of Education. Um, the other thing I'll mention is I, uh, with a number of uh, my colleagues, attended the Governor's Summit on uh, Talent and Education. We we're pleased to see the great attendance, and especially the State Board uh, panel uh, had, I think we had at least double uh, the attendance that we had previously, and uh, very some vital questions which uh, I think brought out some of the different perspectives uh, of board members and uh, at the, on the other hand our, our thoughtful uh, thinking about uh, issues as they're developing. So I uh, uh, appreciate uh, those who put the conference together and uh, invited us. Right. Uh, so as Richard just alluded to, uh, Based on a contract with the state superintendent every March, or by April 1st, I should say, the State Board of Education engages in an annual evaluation of the state superintendent. So uh, as you know, we went into executive session uh, over lunch period to present to the state superintendent our collective evaluation of the work that he has been doing. I am proud and honored to say that the evaluation was uh, a mix of excellent and outstanding. Um, we acknowledged Brian for the work that he has done to help bring the school reform office back to the Michigan Department of Education, the vision that he has set for the Department of Ed, and uh, the goals, particularly the top 10 and 10 um, that were established with buy-in from multiple uh, entities and organizations. Um, we particularly uh, commended Brian for the fact that in a relatively short amount of time, he has really been able to move uh, the culture in a large institution, which we all acknowledge is not an easy thing to do. Uh, it takes true leadership, true talent to be able to uh, establish something as important as uh, a, a vision and a list of goals that go with that vision and to get literally everyone on board at every level of the organization to uh, encompass their work around that vision and those goals. And so uh, we just, we really appreciated um, Brian's leadership in that, um, that area. And so, as is our custom, the board has uh, decided to extend Brian's contract another year, and uh, we, are, we are very proud and honored to do that. So, let me be the first to say congratulations, Brian, on a job well done. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that I just wanted to mention as part of my remarks is today is March 14th. Today is a day when many students across the country are exercising their First Amendment rights and uh, basically becoming extremely civically engaged. Uh, I, I think uh, we recognize that there are certain challenges that occur with this, uh, particularly for principals and administrators to ensure the safety of their students while at the same time um, honoring their their <coughs> rights uh, to express themselves and to have a voice. And so I want to thank both the students and the administrators and the teachers for all of the work that they have done to make sure that today uh, is a safe as well as successful day for the students. Uh, and then also to commend any students um, who have uh, exercised their voice. Um, I think anytime any of our citizens <coughs> express, uh, become civically engaged. We all benefit from that, regardless of what the content is. So, um, you know, we hear too often about young people not being uh, civically active, and I think they are proving to us that that is not quite the case. So, that's all I have to say. All right, superintendent's report. Uh, the governor uh, has announced his Marshall Plan, his vision for the transformation of education, talent, and economic success in Michigan. Uh, these will be investments and partnerships and dramatic education and talent prep revolution needed to prepare people for high demand, high wage career openings in the state. The governor said that Michigan is excelling at job creation, 
job creation, personal income and growth and more, but we can do much better. The Marshall Plan for Talent is about recognizing that old models need to evolve to keep up with the world as it's going, where it's heading. To do this, we need to tear down some silos so that business education can better communicate and work together by working hand in hand to help more Michiganders find good paying jobs in high demand career fields where you can keep Michigan on a positive path towards the future. The plan calls for investing up to $100 million in innovation over the next five years. And it's really an exciting pathway of when we talk about creating multiple pathways for kids and asking kids, what are your passion? What problems do you want to solve? What is it that excites you and let students drive that conversation? It's about helping them go through that process and uh, providing them opportunities while they're in high school to not only get high school experience, but certificates or college credit, uh, as, as well as experience in a business or field that students think they want to go in. And if they don't know why they want to go in, they have an opportunity to try a couple different uh, pathways as part of this process. So this is an exciting adventure, investing in education and talent. And I congratulate the governor for coming up with the vision and look forward to working with his office uh, to make it a reality. School safety obviously has been a, quite a concern and uh, we convened a meeting here where we invited the FBI, state police, Department of De Health and Human Services, our school partners, who else am I forgetting? Attorney General's office. Uh, Kyle ran that meeting for me. Uh, uh, they talked about some best practices, things that they have learned uh, from uh, recent events that have occurred. They're going to continue to meet and come up with some things to share with school districts to uh, help them better prepare uh, for an, uh, an unfortunate incident that may occur. We'll also at our next board meeting I'll work with Kyle to make sure we have some of those people come to the board meeting and talk about some of those best practices and things that, uh, that we can share uh, that help schools be successful in meeting these challenges. Now, of course, the big problem is, is parents want to know exactly what you're doing. And in these school safety plans, kind of, there's got to be some veil of secrecy so that we're not telling people who want to do harm in schools uh, what, how we respond and how we react and how we plan things. But it is an important conversation and I agree with board members that we need to have that conversation and then the board can come up with maybe a set of recommendations that they would like us and the legislature to work on. So we'll work on scheduling that. The preliminary reports that we received so far today, Kyle, is that a lot of kids have taken advantage of the opportunity to walk out, but we don't, we're not aware of any incidences or anything. Uh, and then on the evaluation, I thank the board for the evaluation that they have given me. You know, it's really a sign that if a superintendent gets a good evaluation, it means the superintendent and board are working hand in hand and moving a district or the state in this case forward. It is the partnership with the board that makes me successful and the partnership with the governor's office. So I thank uh, the board for your leadership, uh, your support your guidance, uh, and even at times challenging. We've had a few good arguments, and I like that as an <laughs> Irishman. I think that's healthy and, and makes for better decision making uh, as part of that process. And it also means that I have a good leadership team made up of my executive team, but also the general administrators here at the uh, department who, uh, again, work very hard, very diligent. Uh, you know, we have really come a long ways in vision for what education can and should be. We just ask for patience from people that, you know, you can't move a million four students and 100,000 staff overnight, but I think we have plans in place that are moving us in the right, right direction, including what you heard on the 10 essential literacy facts uh, this morning for each grade level. So I think we're heading in the right direction. I thank the board for its uh, support and its uh, extension of my contract. I do want to say that as many of you know, or maybe all of you know, I've been battling cancer and uh, that challenge has been very difficult. Uh, my plan is to continue to work over the next 30 to 60 days to get some things done that, uh, that are on the plate that I need to get done. And then I will be taking a leave of absence uh, for a medical leave. And we will pray for a miracle to happen during that time. And, uh, 
will stay tuned. And the board at that point would be naming uh, my successor, not my successor, but a uh, acting, because as I go on leave, I always have a right to come off that leave, uh, particularly if a miracle happens. <laughs> so I thank the board for the work that we've done, and I look forward to continuing getting that work done over the next 30, 60 days. And then the board and working with Sheila and the administrative team to continue uh, to move, uh, move the department forward. With that, I think we go to Teacher of the Year. <clears throat> All right, hello everyone. Hey. So I have, uh, I have spent the last two days at the Governor's Education and Talent Summit, along with a few other board members who I saw there, and Brian who I saw there as well. Uh, I actually got a chance to introduce Brian uh, as a speaker at, at one point, which was great. Uh, and so I just wanted to provide a, a quick overview of some of the things that happened at the uh, Governor's Summit, and then also maybe to just put some ideas out there for us to think about as we, as we move forward. So the first day of the Governor's Summit, I participated in a Teach to Lead activity. And just to give you some background on, on what this Teach to Lead activity uh, was all about, there were 16 different groups that came to this meeting. And these groups were primarily, uh, for the most part, teachers. And they all had uh, an idea, an idea that they wanted to bring to this meeting and brainstorm about, um, try and find connections, find business support. Uh, but the idea was that it was a brainstorming session. And so there were these 16 groups, they all met, they were connected with uh, business leaders, with other uh, organi uh, educational organizations, and we were taken through a logic model where we identified the problem that we were trying to solve, we set our goals, and then we, we also set out an action plan as far as how we were gonna move our idea forward. And for my group, I brought a group of, uh, there were five of us total from West Michigan, and we brought the idea of the, of the mastermind which I've shared at a, at a previous State Board of Ed Education meeting. But just to remind you, uh, the big idea of it, this is one of my big projects for my year as Michigan Teacher of the Year, was that I wanted a way to connect uh, teacher leaders from, us, uh, from all around West Michigan. So I've done a ton of work with teacher leaders in, in Kentwood, but I wanted to be able to somehow connect with teachers outside of Kentwood. And so we invited 17 educators total, most of which are teachers, although we do have a few administrators and a, and a social worker. And we were very careful in the, the people that we chose to become part of this mastermind uh, in that we wanted them to be positive, solution-seeking, high-level educators. And so we have uh, teachers from all over West Michigan, from over 10 different school districts, and we meet once a month. And we have a very uh, strict protocol that we use called the hot seat that allows each teacher to come with a challenge that they're currently facing. And then they can utilize the uh, experience and the wisdom of the people within the group to try and help them move forward on, on their challenge. And so we've been doing this since the beginning of the school year. We've been meeting uh, once a month. And it's, it's just been awesome. The group is an amazing group. They've helped me grow. They've helped me with some of my own challenges. And we, we want this opportunity for other educators, for other teacher leaders. And so we're starting to think about how we can grow this idea into other regions or possibly even create some sort of an online version of, of this mastermind. So we brought that to, uh, to the group at the Teach to Lead. We took it through the logic model. And by the end, every group had this big poster that we had created that had all of our ideas. And uh, unknown to us, the, the governor uh, wanted to come check them all out. And so the governor actually came and looked at each one of the groups. I'll, I'll show you a, um, a picture here in just a minute. But I, I actually got, I got two minutes to give my, my elevator pitch, which we had practiced as part of the training. We practiced our elevator pitch. And I actually got to give my elevator pitch to Governor Snyder, uh, which was awesome. He, he asked a couple of follow-up questions, very, very engaged. So that was really uh, pretty exciting. Um, and actually, so the, I'm going to show you a picture here. The next day, this was right before I was introducing uh, Superintendent Whiston, uh, the governor actually tweeted about me. 
So I, I think as, as far as my, my Michigan Teacher of the Year year, this is, uh, on the internet at least, this is the highlight of the Teacher of the Year so far, was to get tweeted by uh, the governor, yeah. which was super cool. Um, but, uh, it, so it says, great to hear Michigan Teacher of the Year Luke Wilcox to discuss his experience with the teacher leadership program that enabled him to be a leader both inside and outside the classroom. And so I'd like to give... You're an excellent educator. Oh, it, something about being a good teacher as well. Yeah. Um, so so I, I, I've been reflecting a lot over the last two days, and, and the last two days have been very intense for me. I had three different speaking engagements over the course of the two days, and uh, I had a different message in each one of those, but I had a common thread amongst the three of teacher leadership. And, and really, I think when I reflect on my year as Michigan Teacher of the Year, th this is the big idea that has, has grown for me is the, is the value of teacher leadership. And so I just have a, a, a few thoughts ab about this I idea of teacher leadership. And uh, some of it goes back to, to my, w what I said yesterday in my talk, right before Superintendent Whiston, was that I feel like teacher leadership is what uh, kept me in the, in the profession of education. Because teacher leadership has allowed me to have uh, an impact bigger than my own classroom. And when I started in teaching, that's all I wanted was impact in my classroom. But as I've grown as a professional, I've wanted to grow my impact into, uh, to other teachers, to other classrooms. And teacher leadership has allowed me that opportunity. And as I'm sitting here at the board meeting today, thinking about my career path, and we talk about like these multiple paths. This is something we talk about a lot. And when I, when I went to go get my master's degree, I, I had this idea that I, I, I wanted something to do with leadership, but I didn't want to be an administrator. And at that point, if you're getting your master's degree in education and you want to be a leader, you, take, you get an ed leadership degree and you go into administration. You become an assistant principal or a principal. And that, and that wasn't what I was interested in doing. I wanted to be a leader from within the classroom, and I didn't really have any options uh, for, for that. You know, there's assessment and there's curriculum and there's some other things, but there's nothing specifically about teacher leadership. So I think moving forward, that's one thing that we can think about uh, in, in, at the college level is what type of uh, programming are we offering for teachers who want to become teacher leaders and not necessarily become administrators. And then the other thing is, uh, uh, from a policy level, the Marshall Plan actually has a fair amount of discussion about this idea of teacher leadership. And there's recently been a bill that's been proposed uh, uh, with, with a portion of it uh, dedicated to teacher leadership in this idea of a master teacher and a master teacher actually being uh, being paid, uh, being given some time and some professional development opportunities. And uh, this is exciting to me. I think this is exciting for uh, for teachers across the state that might get the opportunity to do something in this master teacher realm and this teacher leader uh, development. And so I know there are other states that have done a lot of thinking about this. Uh, the state of Tennessee has, a, has very specific outlines for what a, what a teacher leader is defined as. And I think that that's something that we could uh, look into as a board going into the future. Because I know I am firsthand experience of the, of the value of acknowledging and recognizing great teachers and, and elevating those great teachers into other opportunities where they can impact uh, other classrooms. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is approval of certificate uh, correction to standards for the preparation of teachers of health and physical science. At our June 13th meeting, the state board approved new standards for the preparation of teacher health and physical education. Michigan Department of Education consultants discovered that standards included under the professional responsibility domain of the physical ed standards were mistakenly omitted from the document that was presented to the board and released for public comment. So today the MDE is asking the state board to approve these omitted standards. They've been sent to you. Do you have any questions of our team on those standards? Great presentation, team. <laughs> is there a motion to accept? So move. Support. Support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Boy, you guys get the gold star. You didn't even have to say anything and you got what you want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on today's agenda, the state and federal legislative update. Mark Ackley, Director of Public and Governor Affairs, 
We'll provide an update on the state and federal legislative issues. Oh, he already moved. Quick. I will try to replicate Sarah Kate and Sean's stellar performance there by keeping mm -hmm. this brief. The first thing is the, um, the state legislature requires a report from the state board on the school improvement plans across the state, and you've been given a copy of that report. We did have a um, legislative committee meeting on March 1st, and we did go over it. Um, I'm going to pass yeah, it off to... The legislative committee reviewed uh, the report as required by law and recommends its approval and submission to the Senate and Health Committees of Education. Uh, and I would make that motion. It's been moved. Is there support? It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And the only category, the only thing I want to say is it's an excellent report, well thought through. Staff did a great job. So the committee also discussed a, a handful of uh, bills, legislation, um, some teacher preparation bills that are in the House um, um, Education Reform Committee. Um, there was a lengthy discussion about gun legislation. Um, from what we understand, there is no um, movement on the concealed carry bill that's now in the House. It was a Senate bill now in the House. Um, we also discussed um, House Bill 4084 and Senate Bill 727 dealing with basic skills tests. Um, and I understand that as far as the gun legislation, there have been um, bills introduced beyond the concealed carry bill um, as a result of what happened in Florida, and um, those bills have not, they've been introduced, and I know that the governor's office is working on some strategies. I'm not sure if, Tyler, you want to discuss. We, we're, we're doing a, um, <coughs> yeah, I can refer to the governor's public comments on just kind of a review of, of what we're doing already in the state and how we can improve those things. Yeah. So, and there may or may not be some appropriations tied to that. Yeah, where's the, we're still discussing as the budget moves through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would add that we had a, um, a rich discussion with a lot of, there were, there were only a few of us at the meeting when we missed you, but uh, everybody had thoughts on the uh, teacher preparation bills, uh, the teacher uh, quality bills that are being discussed in the House, and uh, also on the gun and school safety and mental health issues. So w in the absence of, of uh, activity um, on those pieces of legislation, we're going to continue that discussion. Uh, but. Uh, people really were thoughtful about their comments. Can I ask just one quick question about the credit, um, the uh, bill that addresses credits for teacher prep? This is for faculty teaching teachers, correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Well, that. there's actually an increase proposed for um, not only just faculty, but also for um, teachers who would be teaching elementary education for reading. There's mm -hmm. additional credits that are being proposed that the department is working on. Uh, for what kind of teacher preparation would be necessary to do the sort of um, uh, uh, essentials uh, skills that we saw today being presented. For all teachers? Elementary. Oh, just elementary, okay. And that the department is working on. So again, we don't have, those bills have been presented, but they're being discussed. There's no movement on them, but not moving them out of committee at, at this not point. Not this time, yeah. Yep. That's my yeah. report. Great. It's my turn. Thank yeah, you. let's see, there was, uh, Eileen, anything on the, anything else? No, nope. and then Nikki and Nasby. Okay. All right, uh, you heard about the evaluation of the state superintendent and the intention to extend the contract by a year. Is there such a motion? So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries and deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you, board. Appreciate the partnership. Consent yeah. agenda, are there any items on the board wishes to have removed from the consent agenda prior to the vote? Seeing none, is there a recommendation to approve? So moved. Support? Support. Any discussion? <laughs> Um, I, I intend to vote for this, but I, I am certainly interested in learning more about this uh, kindergarten entry program. Yeah. can have uh, uh, Scott come and do a presentation. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Comment by State Board of Education members. 
Okay, future <laughs> meeting dates. <laughs> Tuesday, April 10th, a regular meeting. Tuesday, May 8th, regular meeting. Tuesday, May 22nd, State Board of Ed retreat. Tuesday, June 12th, regular meeting. We talked about a couple of agenda items that we'll be working on for the next meeting or, and so if you have any other agenda items, please let one of the co-presidents or myself know. Dr. Z, please. Um, on the uh, retreat meeting, do we know where that is or where that will be? Most likely at the Henry Center on the campus of Mountain View. We've been there before a couple of years ago. Sorry, the Henry Center. On the campus of MSU. Okay. okay. Have you been there before? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you, sir. Thank you.